Hi guys. Well, I don't know what happened to this uh, sunny day forecast here in paradise and the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in this undisclosed swamp on this collapsing planet. But at least it's a warm winter day. And that would make it Saturday, December 12th, 2020. So, yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles and doing what I do every day, and that's just figuring out the various ways this planet is doomed. Uh, and I want to thank alert <coughs> listener and reader <coughs> Tyler for sending me this story from Scientific American to uh, get us all in the Christmas spirit. So I cover a version of this story pretty much every year. So Scientific American is now joining the chorus uh, of this subject that shows up about two weeks before Christmas each year, I believe, and they have... T Scientific American has titled uh, their story, Human Made Stuff Now Outweighs All Life on Earth. And I'm assuming they're talking about well, all life. That includes redwood trees. Uh, before I get into this, I think my favorite part of this whole article uh was right above the article. Human-made stuff now outweighs all life on Earth. They have a, in, in Scientific American, they have a little banner with a bright red link saying, Holiday Sale! Save 30%! Shop now! So after you finish your shopping for the Holiday Sale, then you can get back under the heading of Earth, human-made stuff now outweighs all life on Earth. The sheer scale of buildings, infrastructure, and other anthropogenic objects, such as this crap uh, that the link one inch above these words leads you to, those anthropogenic objects are talking about here, underscores our, meaning human consumers impact on the planet. Yes, it does. <clears throat> Take it away. This is by a writer named Stephanie Pappas. Explain this to us, Stephanie. Humanity has reached a new milestone in its dominance of the planet. All right. Human-made objects may, may now outweigh all of the living beings on Earth. <coughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> Roads, houses, shopping malls, since is the, such as the one selling that crap in the holiday sale, fishing vessels, printer paper, coffee mugs, smartphones, and all the other infrastructure of daily life now weigh in at approximately 1.1 trillion metric tons, equal to the combined dry weight of all plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, archaea, and protists on the planet. The creation of this human-made mass has rapidly accelerated over the past 120 years. Artificial objects have gone from just 3% of the world's biomass in 1900 to on par with it today. And the amount of new stuff being produced every week is equivalent to the average body weight of all of us 7.7 7 billion people. Uh, I always wonder how they come up with their populations. So every week 
we are now producing our body weight, adding it to the 1.1 trillion metric tons. <clears throat> the, impl the implications of these findings published on Wednesday in Nature are staggering. The world's plastic alone now weighs twice as much as the planet's marine and terrestrial animals combined. Buildings and infrastructure outweigh trees and shrubs. <clears throat> this is study co-author Ron Milo, quote, we cannot hide behind the feeling that we are just a small species, one of many. Yes, uh, back to the article. These numbers <coughs> should be a wake-up call, he adds. They tell us, quote, <coughs> something about the responsibility that we have given that we have become a dominant force. Okay, and so <clears throat> on one side of that paragraph, we have sustainable ear swabs, <clears throat> and underneath that paragraph, we have the Volvo XC80 lease for $415 per month. <clears throat> it does not say whether the Volvo XC60 is as sustainable as the reusable ear swabs. <clears throat> reusable Q-tips. I don't know, guys. Uh, <clears throat> this is a true test of how sustainable you are. But now that we're through the Volvo ad, let's get back to the article. <clears throat> Milo and his team had previously published an estimate of the amount <coughs> of biomass on Earth, which led to the question of how it compared with the mass of artificial objects. Emily Elkham then a graduate student at the Wiseman Institute led the effort to pull together disparate data sets on the flow of materials around the world. The researchers found that human-made or anthropogenic mass had doubled every 20 years since 1900. Total biomass remained more stable in the time period, though plant biomass has declined by approximately one-half since the dawn of agriculture some 12,000 years ago. <clears throat> the team estimates that anthropogenic mass crossed over to exceed biomass this year plus or minus six years, and then I'm going to put the link on here, and you can look at all of their little fancy charts and graphs uh, spelling uh, out the collapse of a planet from all of this planet-eating crap, such as the Volvo <coughs> XC80. The researchers chose to focus only on living biomass, and the anthropogenic objects that are in use, not waste. So they're only talking about what we're actually using. So we're not even factoring in all of the crap in landfills all over the planet. With waste, when you add in uh, all, all of the stuff we have thrown away, Anthropogenic mass began outweighing biomass in 2013, plus or minus five years, and the crossover point is slightly later if, we, if water weight is included in the biomass calculations. The wet weight of the biomass on Earth is currently 2.5 two trillion metric tons, and humans are on track to outproduce that figure 
in 2031, including water, or 2037 without it. Okay. About half of the world's current human-made mass is concrete, with aggregates such as gravel making up much of the rest, bricks, asphalt, metals, plastic, and other materials make up about 19% of the total. The new research actually uses a conservative standard, yes it does, it most certainly does, to define both anthropogenic mass and waste, says Colin Waters, a geologist at the University of Leicester in England, who had discussed the research in the early stages, blah, blah, blah. Take, for example, a gold wedding band. The study would measure only the few grams of gold actually in the band as anthropogenic mass, but somewhere between 4 million and 20 million metric tons of ore were processed to make that one tiny piece of metal Water says, uh, one more reason not to get married, I guess. Similarly, <clears throat> Water says, the analysis does not even take into account billions of tons of earth moved when mining coal or dredging. Taking a more expansive view of human activities into account, he says, would put the point at which anthropogenic mass outweighed biomass back in 1977, according to Waters' research. Whatever the moment when humanity's production eclipsed nature's the study points to a larger narrative in which humans are modifying the planet to such an extent we have created a new geological epoch called the Anthropocene, says Waters, who has been active in research seeking out geological markers of this division of time. And... Uh, then they interrupt this story to get you to insure your car with State Farm. Okay, wrapping up, the new research also raises alarms for the future. Imagine that, new research raising alarm for the future. If current trends hold... And, and, and we all know they're only going, the current trends are only going to escalate. Uh, as we all know, uh, exponentially, if the current trends were to hold, anthropogenic mass will grow to three times, three times the world's biomass by 2040, Milo and his colleagues found, and there are plenty of metals and minerals available to keep this trend going in the near term. All of that new anthropogenic mass will eventually become waste that will have to be dealt with, says Friedland Kraussman, who studies sustainable resource use at the Institute of Social Ecology, uh, blah, 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 and was a peer reviewer for the paper. Quote, quoting uh, Friedland Kraussman, quote, In the next 20 years, we will get as much waste as from the last 110 years together. Most of what we have now has been built in the last couple of decades, since the 1960s. Now, this is becoming end of life, so we are really facing 
huge, huge waste flows. Yes, and if anybody does not understand the connection between this article and holiday sale shop now, obviously uh, we're having a failure to communicate. But Scientific American says, if you enjoyed this story, read this next. How about livestock, pets, and people will dominate future fossils? Yes. Here's a weird uh, story. Earth has a hidden plastic problem. That one's probably talking, I'm quite sure, about microplastics. And let's don't forget Arctic exploitation may, yes, may harm animals large and small. Do you think it may? But with that, uh, I've got to wrap up uh, today's Chronicle of the Collapse and take the little dog on a walk before the rain gets here. I was going to go out on a firewood gathering mission uh, for this evening, but I think our campfire might be getting rained out. But anyway, guys, get out there and enjoy your human-made stuff while you still can. Bye, guys.